When carrying out quantitative research, many young researchers struggle with the concept of sample size determination. Most times, their biggest problem lies even in its calculation. Now, over the past few years, I have seen some researchers even get utterly frustrated with their proposal simply because of this difficulty. Now, unbeknownst to them, the solution to these sample size problems lie in a simple and free software. And guess what? This software is on your mobile phones. Now, come along, let me show you what I mean. Hi, my name is Abdul Hakim Olorokoba from Amadou Bello University, Nigeria. And in this video, I am going to show you how to identify parameters for sample size determination, enter these parameters into the EpiInfo mobile software, and finally interpret your results in a very simple and easy format. Now, if you're ready for this, let's do this, shall we? So, Dr. Fahad Saulawa, a well-renowned public health researcher, wanted to conduct a cross-sectional study. The aim of his study was to determine the prevalence of hypertension among medical doctors in Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital, Chika, Kaduna State, Nigeria. Now, after extensive review of the literature, Dr. Fahad found out that in a previous study among doctors in Aminu Kano University Teaching Hospital, the authors found the prevalence of hypertension among doctors to be 16%. He then decided to work with a 95% level of confidence and leave a margin of error of 5%. All right. In an interview with the director of admin of ABUTH on the 19th of June 2022, he found out that the current number of doctors in ABUTH was 1,233. What's the minimum sample size required for Dr. Salawa's study? So let's see what we can piece out from Dr. Salawa's work. Firstly, let's see what is his study design. Okay. Now, from what we heard, it's a cross-sectional study, right? Good, all right. Secondly, what is his primary outcome variable? What is the primary outcome variable that Fahad is looking for in this study, all right? It's hypertension prevalence, right? Okay, so we've gotten that out of the way. Thirdly, what is the prevalence of hypertension in a previous study, all right? Uh, the prevalence that we had from what was earlier described is 16%. So, and then what was his level of confidence that he wanted to work with? All right, 95% level of confidence. Very good. And lastly, what is the margin of error? Okay, the margin of error, as earlier stated, um, is 5%. Okay, I'm sure by now most of you are already smiling, right? Because you remember the formula, right? Remember this formula. Okay, uh, it's the most popular formula among medical students, especially in ABU Zaya. And if you're a medical student in Amadou Bello University Zaya watching this, I have a 99.9% .9 level of confidence that you'll be using this formula. Well, guess what? EpiInfo uses this same formula too in the back end. Well, with this information, EpiInfo will do this calculation in less than five seconds. All we need to do is just to plug in these parameters appropriately. So let's bring out our mobile phones and launch the EpiInfo mobile software. We're just going to click on Start Calc and then click on the first tab that says Population Surveys. All right. Now, you notice up the top, it says Population Survey or Descriptive Study using random sampling, right? So you understand that we can use this for a cross-sectional study, right? Okay. Next, you will see a table with two columns, all right? This table you see is called the results table, all right? That's where we're going to see our results after putting in all the parameters. Then you will see a space for entering this population size, all right? And next, you see a slider for the expected frequency and its confidence limits. And that's it. Very simple and straightforward, all right? All we need to do is to plug in our parameters. Easy peasy, all right? So, we will leave the results table, first of all, and um, because we'll look up the results when we finish entering our parameters. Now, for the population size, that's the population of medical doctors in ABUTH, all right? So, remember the interview done by Dr. Fahad Saola with the director of admin of the ABUTH, all right? And the current number of doctors in ABUTH was 1,233, all right? We're just going to plug that into here. Okay, and then the next thing is the expected frequency. And we know from the previous study among doctors in Aminu Kano University Teaching Hospital, the expected prevalence of hypertension among the doctors was 16%. So we're going to put that in here. Just move the slider till you get to 16%, all right? 
Finally, we look at the confidence limits, okay? Mind you, this is how the software looks at margin of error, okay? So and we're going to leave this at 5%, all right? And once we've done this, we are good to go. Okie dokie, adichoki. All we need to do now is to check the results table, okay? Now you see in the first column, this first column specifies the confidence level that is desired, all right? While the second column actually houses the sample size, all right? Remember Dr. Fahad, he said he wanted 95% level of confidence, right? So we just look down at where we have 95% level and then we trace it to the second column and voila! We have a minimum sample size of 177 doctors. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, all right? This is super simple and can be done in less than three minutes, so long as you have all your parameters. So 177 doctors is the minimum sample size that will be required for Dr. Fahad to successfully carry out his study. Now, it's your turn. What is the minimum sample size that will be required for Dr. Mariam Fadila for an antenatal care syphilis study, okay? When the expected prevalence was 19% from a previous study and the population of ANC attendees was 20,000 women. The level of confidence at 95%. Please put your responses in the comment section below. And please do not ignore this because I'll be looking out for your responses. Alrighty, this is how easy it is to compute the minimum sample size using Epi Info Mobile right from your mobile phone, okay? Now, if you have gained any value in this video, then give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon to get notified for the next video when it drops. In my next video, God willing, I am going to show you how to use EpiInfo to calculate sample size for an unmatched case control study. But until then, peace.